mistake. No mistake whatsoever. Take it up. Answer my question! The question, jerk! Could you free yourself from anger by, for instance, breaking a set of dishes? The therapies that promote barbarian practices, like screaming and destroying stuff for therapeutic purposes, may be no stranger for you. But scientific psychology ridicules all of them. This is your host Donald and today we explore the valuable field of anger management. I'm like a really nice person, but like the rage is like on the inside. It's hard to live that life of like, you know, being nice and happy, but then on the inside, it's like, I will kill you. Patrick Henry Sherrill has the dubious distinction of being the person who inspired the term going postal. He committed one of the worst mass murders in American history. On August 20, 1986, Sherrill, enraged at the prospect that he would be fired from his job as a postal worker, fired two guns that he hid in his mail pouch, killing 14 employees and wounding six others before taking his own life at the Edmond, Oklahoma post office. Many people now use the term going postal to describe a person's becoming uncontrollably angry and violent. Could Cheryl have averted this lethal outburst if he had vented his pent-up emotions at home by punching a pillow or using a plastic bat to swat away his anger? Most people believe that releasing anger is healthier than keeping it bottled up. This belief dates back to more than 2,000 years ago, but was popularized in modern society by Sigmund Freud, as the concept of catharsis, a purging of anger and other negative emotions that provides a satisfying psychological cleansing experience. Sigmund Freud believed that repressed fury could build up and fester, much like steam in a pressure cooker, to the point that it caused psychological conditions like hysteria or trip-wired aggression. The key to therapy and excellent mental health is to dampen the pressure of negative feelings by talking about them and releasing them in a controlled manner in and out of treatment. A host of films stoke the idea that we can do so by letting off steam and getting it out of our system. In Analyze This, a psychiatrist advises a New York gangster to hit a pillow whenever he's angry. This attitude towards anger is similar to the counsel of authors of many self-help books on anger management. Also, a variety of toys are available on the internet to prevent anger meltdowns. One of our favorites is the choker chicken. <laughs> Techniques to deal with anger have even found a home in some psychotherapies. Some popular therapies encourage clients to scream, hit pillows, or throw balls against walls when they become angry. Proponents of primal therapy, often informally called primal scream therapy, believe that psychologically troubled adults must release the emotional pain produced by infant and childhood trauma by discharging this pain, often by screaming at the top of their lungs. Some supposedly cathartic, therapeutic approaches to cope with anger are arguably even more bizarre. People are able now to practice destructotherapy to relieve office stress. Men and women destroy junked cars and household items, with sledgehammers, to the beat of a rock band playing in the background. This school of thought resulted in a few very influential myths of popular psychology. I shouldn't hold in my anger. It's healthy to vent and let it out. I can't help myself. Anger is not something you can control. Managing my anger means expressing it out loud. Nevertheless, research suggests that the catharsis hypothesis is false. 
For more than 40 years, studies have revealed that encouraging the expression of anger directly toward another person or indirectly such as toward an object, actually turns up the heat on aggression. Moreover, playing aggressive sports like football, results in increases in aggression, and playing violent video games, is associated with increased aggression. So, getting angry, doesn't let off steam. Research suggests that expressing anger, is helpful only when it's accompanied by constructive problem solving, designed to address the source of the anger. If we're upset at our partner for repeatedly showing up late for dates, yelling at them is unlikely to make us feel better, let alone improve the situation. Why is the myth of catharsis still popular, despite compelling evidence that anger feeds aggression? Because people sometimes feel better for a short amount of time after they blow off steam, it may reinforce aggression and the belief that catharsis works. But guess what? On a short run, drugs work too. It's not rocket science. After all, believing that anger helps you get ahead, especially expressed brutally and randomly, if you are positive there's no possibility of controlling it, and that would be wrong to repress it, even for 5 seconds, you did ensure that your problem with anger will continue. Nevertheless, we have only good news in this video. Anger can be controlled, you won't get sick from delaying a rageful reaction, and you don't need to make anyone sick with your brutal display of anger. Here's a comprising list of valuable elements, that you could make use of, besides the well-known breathing exercises. Eliminate risky beliefs. Accept the fact that violent expression of anger will not help at all. On the contrary. Cultivate your realism. Accept the fact that people are not perfect and life is not fair all the time. Delay your reaction. Usually, anger asks for a rapid solution, based on instant gratification. But complex situations are not allowing such solutions. Ask for more information. A better perspective on things will almost certainly help with your emotional stability. Don't forget to react. Passivity is at least as harmful as violence. Repressed anger can and will become a time bomb, hurting yourself and everybody else. Practice self-affirmation. Assertiveness is aggressiveness that went to school. And there, it learned things like respect, listening and personal dignity. Accept the loss. Sometimes, the loss is obvious, certain and definitive. But remember that life and health are more important than anything you may have lost. Practice non-attachment. Recommended by all the great religions of the world, a kernel of non-attachment will make the difference between sickness and sanity. Accept that most important things in your life are neither eternal nor perfect. Build your trust. Learn to believe in this generous universe. Seeing ourselves as individuals devoid of resources will only make our reactions fiercer and more desperate. Thus, everything becomes a matter of life and death. Uncover your eyes and see the gentle giant, that you, are. As you may have noticed, anger management implies work and efforts on more than one level. The intellectual, spiritual, emotional and behavioral ones. A lifestyle develops over the course of years. The neural network that has engraved anger as a reliable problem-solving mechanism, is now, after years of rage, like an eight lanes highway. Nevertheless, there's a chance of forming new roads and building a new network, until becoming unrecognizable human beings. We hope this video presentation was a useful opportunity to improve your anger management skills, and gave you hope for change and personal development. Thank you for your time. We'll see you in the next one. Until then, be the best version of yourself.